It's the Health in the Real World podcast. It's time to start the show with Chris Jenke as your host. Here to give you everything that you need when it comes to fitness strategies. We keep it simple and easy. It's your roadmap to get healthy. You don't need equipment and you don't need a gym. Just the right strategies to get you fit and trim. Welcome to Health in the Real World. We're here today with Jason Goggins. Jason, thank you so much for joining me today. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it as well. Sure. So, so yeah, you're a trainer. You have uh, two decades of experience. Mm-hmm. Tell me that story, how you started training. This is a good story. Yeah. So I, um, I was a police officer and, and uh, I graduated from the University of Florida with the dream of being a federal agent. That's what my dad did. And to do that, I had to have three years of law enforcement experience. So I became a local police officer to get that experience. And uh, when I was in the academy, well, I was always an athlete. I was always fit and in shape. When I came through the academy, I was in really good shape. And when I went onto the road as a police officer, things got really, really busy. I was kind of burned out on fitness because the academy was so physically grueling. Right. And I put on 37 pounds in my first you know, 18 months or so, uh, give or take. And I was an overweight police officer, flat out what I was. And, uh, and it didn't really phase me too much. And I, I really, again, it was, it was 21 years ago. So I don't really know why it didn't phase me, but it didn't phase me too bad until uh, we had had these, these band of, of burglars. They're like, they, they were like 18, 20 year old kids, if you will, who were burglarizing houses. And they had already hit a bunch of houses in the area for, for months. And one day an officer just happened to see them running out of a house as he was driving by. So he called for backup. I show up as backup. As I'm pulling in, I see one kind of dart in front of my car. So I get out and chase him. And it's the first time since I gained all the weight, I'd been in a real foot chase. So we ran for what was probably three, four minutes at most. And it was a dead sprint, right? And of course you're wearing 30 pounds of gear on you as well. So I'm, I'm actually 67 pounds overweight with the gear on. And uh, he goes up this hill and slips and tumbles back down to my feet. And I just kind of plop on him. <laughs> and I went to tell dispatch that I had one in custody and I couldn't speak. I physically could not get words out of my mouth. I was so out of breath after a three minute run, right? I could not even tell dispatch I had one in custody. Well, luckily for me, this kid was about 160 pounds soaking wet and didn't put up any fight. And I was able to get him into custody safely. But a couple things. First, when I finally got back to my car, sat there and kind of thought about what just happened. I thought if that dude was 220 and wanted to fight me, I had no chance. You're, you're done. Yeah. No chance. I'm done. And if you wanted to get my gun or whatever, he could have had it because I had not had no fight left. Right. I was so tired. That was a huge wake up call. Then whenever you write reports as a police officer, this is back in the old days, they may do it different now, but you used to go back, watch the video from the dash cam and mm. kind of write down what happened. So you make sure you get the details right. And there's a, a, a kind of a shot of me running in front of my car as I got out. It was the first time I'd seen my fat butt on video. <laughs> and that was another wake up call. So the combination of those two things were like, all right, something's got to change here. Because next time my life might be on the line. Right. And that next day I started running, right? And then back then I had no idea what I was doing with fitness. I didn't know anything about nutrition. I knew nothing. But I just knew people run to get fit. And so I started running. And, and I started losing a little bit of weight and studying nutrition more, studying fitness more, and got into weight training and all these things. And it just built on itself lost like 37, uh, maybe 38, 39 pounds. Again, I don't remember the exact numbers and got really fat. got down to like 178, I think at my lightest. And uh, of course that comes with questions like, dude, how did you do it? Because there's a lot of overweight police officers. And I started helping people, police officers get fit and and work with them and give them some programs to follow. And it started my career. That's kind of where this whole thing started. And then at some point I realized I want to do this full time, made the change, left police work. And, uh, and open my first gym. So that's, that's kind of the progression of how it all started. Wow. That's, that's a great story. What, <laughs> uh, what, so what do you tell somebody, let's say that police officer that was overweight or your, your clients now, uh, what is the first or second or third, like the very first steps in, in getting fit? Let's say somebody is that 37 pounds overweight or even more. What do you tell them to do first? Over, after 21 years and working with thousands of people, I can tell you the first step is not always what people think it's going to be. I think it's between the ears first. Um, somebody's got to be ready. 
you know, no one's going to make, no trainer, no coach, no spouse, no friend, no coworker is going to make somebody be ready to change, right? You've got to be ready yourself. And when I work with people, I have them do a lot of little tasks up front to get this in the right place, your mind in the right place. And, you know, a lot of times it's what I call like a man in the mirror routine that I, I stole from uh, a guy named J Coach Jason Ambo, who's, who's really good at mindset stuff. And, and it's just being honest with yourself, right? Having an honest conversation of where your life is right now, where your fitness is, where your health is, because we're really good at lying to ourselves. Mm. And I can't tell you how many times people have come to me and said, man, I didn't realize how out of shape I was till I did my first workout, or I didn't realize how unhealthy I was until I got my blood numbers back from the doctor. Or I didn't realize how overweight I was till I saw myself in a picture, right? And it's like, well, how, you're, you're 90 pounds overweight. How did you not realize this? Because we're very good at lying to ourselves, right? It's right. easier to lie to yourself. So a lot of times it's about getting honest with where you're at and, and what you need to change, right? And I, I call it the pain pleasure pendulum, right? Where mm -hmm. as humans, we run away from uh, pain and towards comfort. Yep. So if I can get the pain of where you sit today to be worse than what you perceive the pain of change to be, you'll move towards change. And that's the first step in doing that. And also it's become cliche now, but it's still very powerful. It's having a strong why. Like, yeah. Why is this important to you? And it's, it's, it's drilling down until we get to the root because you don't just want to lose weight. There's a reason you want to lose weight and the re reason beyond that reason. And you drill down to the real emotional nuts and bolts of why you want to drop weight or get fit, right? Combined with the, the honesty of, and, and shifting that pain pleasure pendulum, now we can start moving the right direction to get that inertia broken, that freight train moving the right direction. From there, if you want to talk about principles of fat loss, <laughs> it, it all does and always comes down to, to being in a caloric deficit. And I hate to say that because when I say that, people hear me say, well, eat whatever you want. I'm not that guy. <laughs> I'm not an if it fits your macros guy that says eat whatever you want. It is very hard to maintain a caloric deficit doing that. But at the end of the day, the law of thermodynamics, energy being created or destroyed or cannot be, is, is what it comes down to. So yeah. how do we find a nutrition approach that allows you to do that, that's realistic and sustainable? How do we find exercise that, that you enjoy and will actually do? And I'm a huge fan of strength training to go along with that for a lot of reasons. But you know, if I'm going to you know, put someone on a plan, it's going to follow those tenets uh, with individualization as to how we apply it to your life. Right. And, and strength training is, is, I'm a huge fan as well, you know, getting the muscle mass, in, increasing your metabolism, uh, and just being able to do your day to day activities so much better, right? Like, yeah. if you can lift up your kids, or your grandkids without back pain and things like that, it's just it's just such a win for people, right? And agree. you know, my my training tends to focus more on that person who has had that back pain. And I always ask them, I say, you know, you mentioned you're also 20 pounds overweight. If you had a choice, now obviously we're going to try to do both, but let's just say you only could get one. Would you rather get rid of your back pain or would you rather lose your 20 pounds? Mm -hmm. Every single time. Oh, I'd rather get rid of my back pain. I don't care about the weight. Yeah. Um, and so it's interesting, like how you mentioned, you know, all these things, right? Food that works for them, food that, that tastes good, that's going to be um, enduring, that you're going to be able to stick with, right? Uh, and not have this feeling of deprivation, like, mm -hmm. oh, it's not letting me eat anything, man. That Jason guy's a jerk. <laughs> right? All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, so what do you do for that client? Let's say they've been with you for a while. They're achieving some good results. Maybe they're not quite where they wanted to be, but they're pretty close. Uh, and they sort of like fall off the wagon, right? You've heard that, that cliche a little bit, right? They, they're just like, ah, oh, man, I just kind of lost my motivation. Like what, where do you take them from that point? What's your pep talk? I would go back to everything I just said. I would go back through the routine that we started with, right? And, and go back to the, and, and listen, some people, they, they've just fallen off the wagon and they're going to have to get themselves back on. I, you know, we, as, as trainers and coaches, we can't help everybody. Not everybody wants to be helped. Yeah. Uh, but that person that, that really is crying out for help really wants to get back on, on, on the train. It's about going through that routine again, right? Cause here's what happens. Here's why I think people lose motivation. Cause that's an important thing here too, as well is remember that pain pleasure pendulum, right? So the pain of where they live today, being overweight, back pain, whatever their issues are, is worse than what they perceive the pain of change to be. So they're going to run towards change, right? Yep. Here's what happens, though. We, we get what we call a false positive. And you start to get a little bit of results. The back pain kind of gets a little bit better. The, you, you lose seven, eight pounds, and you think, I can relax now. And what happens yeah. is the pain pleasure pendulum shifts back out of your favor, right? You relax, and I call it a slippery slope, right? We go, well, I... 
you know, I've lost 20, 20 pounds or 15 pounds. I can go do this now. I can take some sessions off. I can go back to what I was, right? It's that slippery slope uh, mentality because the pain pleasure pendulum has shifted out of your favor. And now it's easier to run back <laughs> to your old lifestyle. So it's shifting it right back in your favor. And a lot of times that's making somebody realize, like, it, it takes someone like you or some people with, in pain. You know, if you work with me and I have back pain, and it gets 50% better. And I think, oh, I can move a little bit better. I'm sleeping better. All these things are improving. If you can make me, and, and I start to slide backwards again, because maybe the sessions are, are challenging or my schedule's gotten crazy or whatever. If you can show me that if I do not keep doing what I'm doing, I'm going to go back to that life of pain. Sometimes we can get that pleasure, pain pendulum shifted back in the right direction. But it always is going to come back to that because that's human nature. That's our survival instinct. We are wired to run away from a threat and pain right. is a threat. So the, the, the back pain, oh, that hurts so bad, made them come to you because that was too challenging. Now the back pain feels better and you know as a professional, but it's not there yet. Yeah. They got to shift that thing back to where they realize they got to stick it out until we get all the pain, not just the pain gone, but the underlying causes of the pain cleared up. Right. And, and you know, I think people who are successful in their fitness for a long period of time, at some level, we kind of know that uh, we, we kind of know how fragile it is, right? It's like at any moment you, you stop for a month, you're, you're sliding down that mountain, right? So there's almost like that balance, that balance is still there. It just might not be as, as obvious, right. To, to yeah. somebody who's maybe a beginner. Um, so where do you, where do you personally, um, not so much the, the story from when you're a police officer, but more, more recent, like, where do you personally struggle with your health and fitness? I think it's really, uh, an important question just because, you know, you're a trainer, I'm a trainer, and sometimes non-athletes or, or non-fit people kind of see us and go, oh, well, you guys have it all figured out. But I think it can be really valuable to, to shed some insight into that. So where do you struggle? And then also, what have you done to overcome that struggle that has worked? That's a great question, man. And it's so true. It's, it's, it, there, there's this fallacy out there that, that fitness professionals, we're just wired different and we never crave pizza. We never crave the bad foods. You know, we use that in quotations. We never have, are lazy. We never just want to sit around. And we, we do all that. <laughs> yep. There's many, many days I sit in there and I have to talk myself into my workout, right? There's many days where I don't want to work out. And I am married with four kids and run a business, right? So my kids are, are 16, 14, 12, and 10 very busy, very challenging ages. And there's every reason in the world not to take care of myself, right? I mean, I, let me phrase that differently. I have every reason to take care of myself. There's every excuse not to, not to take care of myself. Right. And, and, and at the end of the day, it, it is a challenge. It really is. And so for me, the way I overcome that is a few things. If we go back to the mental side of things, I stay very closely in contact with my why. Now, everybody's why is going to be different, but mine are, are, are threefold, right? And I really stay close, it, it keep these atop of conscience, if you will, because they really help me get out of the, of the chair and, and into the gym. And one is that I have to lead my clients first and foremost. So I have to show, you know, lead the way and show them that I'm doing, I'm practicing what I'm preaching, right? Number two is that I want to be healthy and energetic and, and thrive as my, I'm 45 years old. So as I get older, right, I don't want to live a, a life where I'm, I'm forced to sit on the couch because I'm too tired or I can't play with my kids and in, in, in 10 years possibly have grandkids and be able to play, right? I think about that stuff. And the third is I want to set the example for my kids. They know what I do for a living. They know that I work out every day. They will see me not getting up. They'll see me procrastinating. They'll see me slacking. And I don't want to set that example for them. So those are my whys. They don't have to be the same as somebody listening, but those are mine. And that's what keeps me from, from being too lazy or too sedentary or whatever uh, you know, phrase you want to use or from going off the rails nutritionally when there's many days when I want to, right? Because we're so busy, so hectic. And uh, so that's the first thing. Second is I have found things that are realistic for me. Like I'm not trying to, to maintain my fitness, build my fitness, lean out. You know, there's times when I can put on a few pounds and want to lean back out. That happens to all of us. And, and there's times where I just don't want to go super, super quote unquote clean with my eating and give up everything I love. And that's also not realistic for me. You know, I've got four kids. They've four, you know, three of the four right now are playing a sport. We have practice and games and all this hard to you eat grilled chicken and broccoli out of a Tupperware every meal. <laughs> right. so I've got to find ways that work for me. I've got to do exercise, A, that fits my schedule, but B, 
that I enjoy as well. That, I'm a huge fan of exercise you enjoy. I think that strength training needs to be the core of everybody's program. But beyond that, I'll go play a sport sometimes. I'll do, you know, I owned a CrossFit gym for years. I don't do CrossFit anymore, but I'll still do a CrossFit workout or maybe do that for a few weeks because it, it's something different and it interests me in the moment. I'll do a sandbag workout. I'll go rock. I'll go hike. I'll, I try to find something I enjoy because I'm far more likely to do it if I look forward to it. Instead of saying, well, I, I hate running, right? Even though I use running in the past, I don't like it. Yeah. If I said to myself, well, the only way to stay fit is to run, I would never mm. do it. I just Set yourself up for failure right there. Yeah. Right. So doing something I enjoy, you know, finding a nutrition approach that fits my life as it currently stands right now and keeping my brain in the right place is, is, is how I overcome it. But make no mistake. That's why it was a great question you asked. It's we all battle it, yeah. right? Even professional athletes don't want to work out all the time and they get paid millions, right? We all battle it, but it, it doesn't mean that it can't be overcome because it can. That's huge. And, and you know, that's one, one reason why I wanted to name this podcast health in the real world is like, everyone's got their real world. So you have your four kids are 16, 14, 12, and 10. My four kids are eight, six, four, and 17 months. You're so right behind me. I'm right behind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, four, four is like the perfect number. It's great. Um, so yeah, the, there's a real world that's calling and there's no way, like you said, taking Tupperware of broccoli and chicken and, you know, to soccer practice or whatever sports they're playing. It just sometimes just doesn't happen, right? Sometimes you have to eat the bad food or, you know, skip a workout or do a different kind of workout and it happens, right? And, and that's my biggest issue with, I think, our industry right now is there's a lot of coaches and, and plans out there that would make you feel guilty for that. Right. And they're going to tell you, you just don't want it bad enough. And if you really wanted it, you would have, and that's a bunch of crap. And, and at, your, at your kid's age, it's very physically exhausting, right? At that age, yes. especially a 17-month-old, they got to be bathed, their teeth have to be brushed, they got to be dressed. There's so much, you know, maybe your four-year-old has a little bit of that too, and there's so much work physically. Yep. As they get older, they can do that on their own, but there's a lot of emotional stress mm. that comes with having teenagers, but also their schedules get crazier, right? So it's always, it's never going to get easier. And I hate that advice. Well, well, if you want it bad enough, you'll do it. Sometimes it's just not realistic yeah. to eat perfect, never miss a workout. And I don't think somebody should feel guilty for that because there's ways to work around that. There's always plan B's and plan C's we can go to uh, when life does that to you. So that's one of the reasons I was excited to be on your podcast simply was because of the name of it. <laughs> that's exactly what I teach is, is fitness in the real world because it, it's, it's a much better approach for, for most people. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Um, last question for you, Jason. So you've been called in uh, at a university to give the commencement speech. So you're going to be talking to a bunch of, uh, you know, 21, 22 year olds who are about to start their adult life. What kind of uh, motivational sort of speech would you give them bigger picture? So we're not talking just health and fitness. We're talking bigger picture, life skills, uh, different philosophies, things like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I'm going to tell you some of the same stuff I tell my kids, right? I feel like if my kids can leave this house and we can, you know, attach that to a kid leaving a, a university, but if my kids can leave this house with a few basic skills, right? I feel like if they can understand the true value of a work ethic, I think that's one thing that's really lost on, on younger generations right now is work ethic and, and making sure that they understand that nothing's going to be given. And if I can get my kids to understand, you got to bust your butt in this world to succeed, but if you can bust your butt doing something you truly love, and that's something that I wish I would have done even earlier than I did is move to something I really love. And, and if you can find something you really enjoy doing and then bust your butt doing it, you're going to rise to the top. You're going to be happy. And, and there's a lot of things I would say. This is a great open-ended question. I won't, I won't keep it too long. But I think that that, that is, applies to one side of your life. Then we got another side of our life, and that's our personal life. And you know, I, I encourage my kids, too, to to learn how to communicate, learn how to build relationships, right? Don't settle in a relationship. I've got one girl and I tell her all the time, don't settle for a scumbag guy. You know, you gotta be happy at home and happy at work and to have true happiness in life. So, you know, it, it would be you know, work ethic, do something you love, but also don't settle on the relationship side, build relationships, cultivate them because they're just as important as making money and being successful on the other end. Uh, and that's beyond health and fitness, which I won't get into because obviously that's something I believe in. But that's, you know, off the top of my head, those are some of the things that I would say, because I think if you can have, if you can be happy at work and happy at home, that's, that's better than most. Great. That's awesome. Thank you, Jason. Uh, 
So lastly, uh, how can people get a hold of you? Uh, website, social media, how can they find you? Yeah, so my website is jasongogginsfitness.com. So Jason, G-O-G-G-A-N-S, fitness.com. And, uh, you know, I, I, there's, you can explore kind of what I do on there. And then I do all my social media through my Facebook personal profile. So you can look me up on Facebook, Jason Goggins. Friend requests me. I put a ton of free content out. I believe in delivering a lot of value that way. So uh, connect with me on there. And, uh, and, and hopefully you get value of some of the stuff I put out there that focuses very strongly on fitness and fat loss in the real world. So Jason Goggins, thank you so much for joining me today. Health in the real world. Appreciate it. Man, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on, man. Thanks for listening to the Health in the Real World show. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below. Visit mycorebalance.com to learn more.